In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to edit 3D in EDIUS 7. I will examine stereoscopic pairing, dynamic windows, keyframing, and depth transitions. EDIUS 7 provides the most comprehensive 3D tool set available today, proving once again that with EDIUS 7, you really can edit anything. I have selected clips from various devices. They include media files from the Panasonic AG3D-A1, the Panasonic HDC-Z10000, the GoPro Hero 3, and the Atomos Ninja. I have already shown in another tutorial how to automatically have certain 3D clips from Panasonic and Sony cameras pair up automatically in the source browser. Now I want to show you manual stereoscopic pairing. These clips from the Panasonic AG3D-A1 will start us off. Panasonic automatically labels your left side capture 20,000 sequentially and your right side capture 30,000 sequentially. I will highlight all of them by clicking one and then control A for select all. Right click and choose set as stereoscopic. That brings up a window where we see your clips listed. But right now there's a mix under clip name left and clip name right. But simply click auto pairing and magically they're sorted out with the correct clips on the left and right columns. Depending upon what camera you're working with, you can choose different forms of sync. In frame, start frame, or time code. Also, EDIUS 7 analyzes the clips and comes up with a percentage of similarity between the two clips. The slider across the bottom can be moved to check portions of each clip. Clicking the monitor preview shows your image on the preview window. Next, let's take a look at these Hero 3 clips. These are taken from a Hero 3 custom 3D system that I designed and built. Notice, as we scroll through, we have left and right clips. EDIA 7 allows us to manually pair up the clips in the bin. To work properly, the left clip should be on top of the right. I like to use the detailed text large to make it easy to rearrange the clips. Now, let's move the left clip below the right clip and continue to do so until you have them all neatly paired together. Select all, right click, and set as stereoscopic. Notice in our window that we have one clip on the right and left that are in the wrong sides. It's an easy fix by clicking the arrow in between the two clip images. Click OK and you're done. The Z10,000 clips do not need to be paired and the Ninja clips just need to have their stereo properly set recognizing them as side-by-side -side images. With that done, we can move on to dynamic windows. There will be times when you're shooting 3D where you may have edge violations that cannot be avoided. An edge violation is when you can see part of an object with one eye, but you can't see it with the other. Our brain, which fuses the objects together to create the illusion of depth, cannot reconcile this. For some, this can cause an instant headache. For others, eye fatigue. The way to eliminate this retinal rivalry is by masking one of the images. Let's take a look at these images shot with the Hero 3 3D Guy 3D system. These were shot at the famous Shibuya Crossing in Tokyo, Japan. It is widely recognized as the busiest crossing in the world during rush hour. Notice the left and right edges of the screen. To see this, you really need to look at it on a stereoscopic screen or by using red cyan glasses in anaglyph. On the left side of the screen, observe that part of the image from the right lens of the camera is missing. On the right side of the screen, you can see a similar image problem involving missing portions of the left lens of the camera. I'll show you how to fix this by adding a vertical mask to one or both of the images on either the left or right hand side. By inserting the vertical mask to one image, we eliminate the retinal rivalry since we no longer see that offending part of the image. Now, neither eye sees it. I have created some custom user presets 
by using the mask filter. The dynamic window creates different effects based on how you use it. Dynamic windows can be complicated. Sometimes they need to float in and out. And this can be easily accomplished with EDIUS 7 using keyframes. Let's talk about what to do with keyframes. Another way to use keyframes in EDIUS 7 is for depth transitions. When transitioning from scene to scene in 3D, it is important that the subject does not jump from the foreground quickly to the background. This is called a depth jump and can cause visual distress to the viewer. The way to avoid this is by using keyframes in your stereo adjuster. As you see in this three shot, our subject is in full frame in the first shot. Next, we jump to a close up and then lastly, back to full frame. This is a commonly used shot selection in many 2D productions. But in 3D, this is an eye killer. The changes happen too rapid for our brain to adjust. In real life, people don't instantly zoom from one position to another. We'll start out with the stereo on the full frame in the first shot, keeping it at a normal, acceptable stereoscopic level. Next, as we approach the close-up, we'll reduce that stereo so that it will match up with the close-up. When the close-up starts, we reduce the stereo there and then gradually increase it to the level that we want, reducing it back down again towards the end of that scene. I will adjust the depth of the shot so that as the scene transition occurs, the depth flows at a pace that allows for the story being told without killing your viewer's eyes. These tools can be used in many ways in both 2D and 3D. I have introduced you to the concepts. Now, experiment and find ways to use these in your workflow. Thanks and see you next time.